When I tell people that I rescue snakes and that I have pet snakes, I typically get one of two reactions. People are either really interested because it's not as typical as having, I don't know, a dog or a cat, or I get people who are gravely concerned. And they're not gravely concerned because, you know, it is an unusual pet. They're concerned because they are absolutely genuinely worried about my safety because I do have snakes in my house. You should see the look on their face when they find out I have an eight foot boa in my living room. Now I typically will laugh and explain that my snakes are well contained and well handled and very like human adjusted, but then I'm left wondering why were they so worried in the first place until I remember one crucial thing. Snakes are really terrifying if you follow some of the popular myths out there. And that's the thing, there are a lot of myths out there surrounding snakes, but they all make snakes out to be a villain and dangerous and something that should be avoided at all costs. And this is such a bummer, not just because snakes are vital to our environment, but because snakes are truly amazing creatures. So let's bust some snake myths today. Hey guys, I'm Erin and on this channel we dig into reptile education for better care and conservation. Helping me with today's video is Zephyr. Zephyr is a three-year-old banana ball python and he really is uh, more a puppy than anything. I, I always say he's the golden retriever of my ball pythons. Are you perfect? So as a snake owner, I've heard countless myths surrounding snakes and most of them kind of make me laugh because, well, I live with these little guys and I get to see what their behavior is really like, but then I end up feeling really, really sad about it because I know that if you don't understand snakes and you hear these myths being presented as fact, you're gonna be afraid of them. And that fear ultimately comes back on the animal because people feel like they need to protect themselves from animals like this one. And that's why these myths are so dangerous because they lead people to believe things that are not true and lead to sayings like, the only good snake is a dead snake. Oh gosh, don't listen to that Zephyr, that's terrible. Oh, I know, it's awful. So let's dig into four myths that are super common and we're gonna talk about why they're not true. Now, before we dive into this week's topic, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to hit that subscribe button and make sure that you turn on your notifications so you don't miss a single video. Myth number one, snakes are aggressive and they want to attack you. Do you want to attack me, Zephyr? Well, you can see I've been handling Zephyr this whole time. So as you can see, he's not aggressive, but let's talk about snakes in the wild because that's kind of where you hear this myth like really affecting snakes. Snakes do not, <laughs> snakes do not want to attack you, nor are they naturally aggressive animals. What is actually happening when people come across a snake that seems aggressive is a snake that is being defensive. Why? Because snakes are very simple-minded creatures. They typically see things in two lights. You're either prey, so like a mouse, or you're a predator. Now for a person versus a snake, what do you think they're thinking about us? I can tell you without a doubt that this guy doesn't look at me and think, oh, that's a, you know, that's something I can eat. I can tell you without a doubt that most snakes in the wild, you're gonna come across like rat snakes, garter snakes. They're not looking at you thinking, mmm, that's delicious, I'm gonna eat it. They're looking at you thinking, oh my gosh, that's gonna eat me. So what do they do? They defend themselves the same way that we defend ourselves from things that we perceive as dangerous, like snakes. A snake is gonna do the same thing, but their natural inclination is not going to be to attack. Instead, they're gonna try to scare you off. They're gonna bluff strike. They're gonna try to get away. Some snakes even go as far as playing dead. I mean, have you ever seen a hognose snake? They are some of the greatest actors of our time. But biting or attacking, that's the last line of defense. And it's not because they want to hurt you, it's because they want to get away from you. So let's bring that back to pet snakes. Now you can see he's very well socialized and that's typically what you wanna see in a pet snake. This comes with time and teaching trust. So Zephyr sees me kind of as a warm tree. He knows I'm not gonna hurt him. He knows that I'm not food. So what am I? I'm just a really cozy place to hang out. But if you have a snake that you're not handling or that you are only interacting with when it's time to feed, that snake may see you as a threat and you might see some defensive behaviors. The second myth is so ridiculous, but I hear it all the time. And that myth is that snakes 
size up their prey. You've probably heard this story. It's often told as like, somebody had a pet snake that wasn't feeling well, so they let the pet snake sleep in bed with them, which by the way is dumb. The snake stretched out alongside the person and had stopped eating, so that person took the snake to the vet and the vet said, you need to be careful because the snake is fasting and sizing you up so that it can eat you. I mean, there are, there are a lot of variations of the story and they're all equally stupid. L let's, let's dig into this, okay? So the number one reason that this makes me laugh and is so stupid is that this implies that this entire snake is just a tube, like a, a mouth, a stomach, and then an exit, right? <laughs> Zephyr is not just a stomach, okay? He wants you to know that. He has a heart, he has lungs, he has lots of organs in this little tube noodle body, but it isn't all stomach. The other thing that this implies is that they have this like built-in, like hyper-intelligent measuring system. They do not. <laughs> They don't do that. They don't measure things up. Can you imagine a snake in the wild coming across like a field mouse or something and before this snake decides it's time to eat the field mouse or the frog or whatever it finds, they have to go up to this animal, to the prey. They have to stretch out alongside of it and determine if it's the right size. How many prey creatures do you think are going to like sit still long enough to do that? The other part of your here is, is like how stupid and dangerous would that be for the snake because most prey creatures can fight back and can inflict damage. So all around, this is absolutely silly and they're not going to waste energy on trying to eat a human, okay? Because that's what that story also implies is that the that snakes can eat people. I wanna be really clear here. I have an eight foot boa, okay? This boa is much taller than me, three feet longer than I am, right? And the snake cannot eat me. The largest prey item that my red tail boa can eat is a large rat. Not my dog, not my cats, and certainly not my kids. The same thing goes for most snakes in your area. If you're living in the United States, most of the snakes that you are gonna see around in the wild are going to be snakes that are gonna take down things like birds or you know, mice, small rodents. They're gonna deal with that type of prey. They're not gonna be going after anything large. So is your snake sizing you up to eat? No. Now I want to know, have you heard that myth before? And if you have, did you think snakes were smart enough to measure up their prey? Zephyr's pretty insulted right now, I feel like, because I keep calling him, like, not bright. I mean, I mean he's amazing and wonderful, but um, I don't think he's going to be winning, like, any awards for intelligence anytime soon. This third myth is one that drives me absolutely batty. And it's all about <laughs> how snakes feel. And you've probably heard it in the past. It's something that I've even read in children's books. And it's the, ew, snakes are slimy. Snakes are reptiles and reptiles are not slimy. Snakes are included in this rule. This guy isn't slimy. What he is, is shiny. He's very shiny. He's very smooth. I think that that shine is really what leads people to think that they're slimy, but they are very dry, smooth animals. The other thing I think is that people get reptiles and amphibians confused. Frogs are probably a little bit sticky. You know, they're a little bit sticky feeling. Toads are a little bit cool and have their moments. Amphibians are more slimy. And I think that people, because they have more hands-on experience with frogs, how many kids haven't caught a frog or held a frog? Most people have experiences with frogs, so then they see something like this, uh, which is worm-shaped, a long tube, and shiny, and they automatically go, oh my gosh, it's slimy. They're absolutely not. The other thing that kind of ties into that is a lot of people think that snakes are cold. I think that's another thing that contributes to that belief that they're slimy. But the truth is, is that snakes can be cold, but they're not typically cold. Snakes are ectothermic, and this means that they get their body heat from the environment around them. They don't make their own heat like people do or like dogs do. They require things like the sun and the warm earth, or for a pet snake, they have heat lamps and bulbs and whatnot and heating pads in order to give them the heat that they need. So generally speaking, a well taken care of snake isn't gonna be cold, but a bit on the warm side. So are snakes slimy or cold? or gross, not in the least. Another myth that is so wildly entertaining to me is that snakes will chase you down. Everybody has that story. They know that person who was out hiking and they got chased down by some sort of snake. But the fact of the matter is, is that snakes don't chase things. They are much more inclined to try to get away from whatever they see unless they are trying to hunt. And even then they're not gonna chase. 
they're gonna ambush. If you've ever seen a snake hunt, it is them kind of slowly stalking and then striking. So what about the stories about the people who say they have been chased? Were they chased? Are they lying? No, they misunderstood what was happening with the snake. Like I said before, snakes are not naturally aggressive animals. They're defensive animals and they're not particularly smart. So when they get in a situation where they see something that they perceive as a predator, they're gonna try to get away. They're gonna flee. That's their natural instinct is to just like, vamanos, they're gonna go. They're leaving. Unfortunately, because they're not super intelligent. Sometimes that means they flee in the direction of the predator. They just like zoom at you. That's not chasing though. <laughs> they're genuinely trying to get away. You just happen to be in their path because they're not super smart. And that's probably what's happening. But I can tell you that I have crossed paths with many a snake and not one has chased me, even though I poke and prod at them. I'm talking in the wild, I'm talking like in my house, I could put any of my snakes on the floor and then like skip past them, even carrying their food and they're not gonna chase me. Why? Because it's a huge amount of energy. It is a huge amount of energy for them to put into getting away that fast. It's supremely stressful for them and you know, they, like us, don't wanna have a bunch of stress in their life. <laughs> So do snakes chase you? Absolutely not. That is another myth busted. Myths about snakes are generally so outlandish that snake owners will laugh them off. But if you don't have hands-on experience with snakes, it would be easy for you to believe these things. It would be so easy for you to believe them and for you to miss out on some incredible opportunities or the experience of really appreciating these amazing animals. Now I wanna know, have you heard any crazy snake myths that maybe you haven't heard me talk about? Or maybe you've got a crazy snake story from your life. I would love to hear about it. Leave me a comment below and tell me all about your crazy snake experiences. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell because we're gonna be putting videos up every Thursday all about reptile education. All right guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.